Welcome to the Leaders in Payments podcast, where we talk to C-level leaders from across the payments landscape. We'll be discussing the products and services that impact the payment space today, as well as trends and predictions for the future of payments. We will also hear stories from our guests about their journeys to the top. Yeah, if we think about mega trends that are going on, which I think you're describing now, first of all, digitization of daily lives and consumer mobile payment adoptions is on the rise across all categories, right? The branded merchant apps, super apps, or even online browsing apps, I mean, you know, where you can order from a fuel dispenser, order from your mobile app, pull forward, and they'll deliver your products, you know, from the C store right to your cart. That was Don Frieden, the president, CEO, and chairman of P97 Networks, and he is our special guest this week. This is episode 97 of the Leaders in Payments podcast, and I'm your host, Greg Myers. And hey, before we get started, I've got a special announcement to make. Next month, July, is Women Leaders in Payments Month and is sponsored by American Express. We've got an amazing lineup of guests that we'll be announcing next week, so stay tuned. A special thanks to American Express for being our sponsor. Now, back to the show. Don grew up in Fort Worth, Texas, attended North Texas University, and has been in Houston, Texas for about 30 years. P97 is making the payments at the convenience retail and fuel industry simple, fast, and secure. They are a global company with 175 team members, with about 100 of those at the headquarters in Houston. Beyond payments, they provide loyalty programs for fuel brands and digital marketing opportunities that can be delivered to the fuel dispenser, connected car in dash screens, mobile devices, and voice channels. Don has some great insights into the future of mobile payments, including the enormous buying power today and in the future of millennials, who are the first digital native generation. We've got a great episode today, so let's get started. Hi, Don. Thank you for being here and welcome to the Leaders in Payments podcast. Thanks, Greg. Thanks for having me. Look forward to our conversation today. Yeah, me too. So let's dive right in. Tell our audience a little bit about yourself, maybe where you grew up, where you went to school, where you currently live, a few things like that. Yeah, good. So I guess uh, like most probably on this podcast, you know, grew up middle class family, actually grew up in Fort Worth, Texas. My father was a career aviator. My mother worked in the medical industry and radiology. I grew up with a farm in Kansas where I spent summers as a teenager and grew appreciation for hot summer days and hard work. After high school, I attended University of North Texas where I studied finance, which I'd say later inspired my interest in payments. So I guess brings us to where we are today. Okay. And you're currently in the Houston area, is that correct? Indeed. Yeah. Working predominantly around the energy industry. So I've been in Houston for about 30 years since got out of school. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Well, let's talk about P97 Networks. Tell the audience what you guys do there. Sure. So I guess we have an exciting story. We're building a great company, but let me start with the beginning of what is convenience retail payments and what's our value proposition. So, you know, just assume you're driving down the highway, you need to pull over for fuel or for an EV charge or just plain refreshments. This is the experience that P97 is transforming. So we we make the payment process simple, we make it fast, and we make it secure, you know, similar to how PayPal dominating e-commerce with one-click payments or Shopify is dominating e-commerce with digital storefronts. Here at P97, we're dominating convenience retail and fuels marketing with mobile commerce. So by providing these large energy brands and convenience retailers with a cloud-based mobile commerce platform, including site integration, digital marketing, and consumer engagement tools to help them ready their business for the new age of mobility. Also, just want to highlight we're participating in a multi-trillion dollar mobile payments market, which we have a market size unconstrained opportunity. And, you know, the underlying foundational technology that we're developing improves every day. So we're fortunate to have this window of opportunity where our market leadership position just really provides us confidence in our ability to sustain growth and remain at the forefront of innovation at the industry. I think company-wise, we're a global company, offices in Houston, Atlanta, London, Melbourne, and offshore engineering in the Republic of Belarus, about 175 team members 
including about 100 of our staff here at our headquarters in Houston. Okay. Are there other markets beyond sort of that fuel and retail that you guys play in? Yeah, interesting. So we're playing in what's called energy transition. So if you think about the large, formerly known as large oil companies, now becoming large energy companies, they're all trying to develop and deploy low carbon footprint solutions for transportation. So things like uh, electric vehicle, hydrocarbon as an alternative fuel. So we play right in the middle of that nexus of where big energy is going through energy transition. Automobile manufacturers are also trying to become low carbon footprint producers and introducing EV charging vehicles and large utilities that are trying to provide the power to enable those uh, electrification of transportation through home circuits or roaming networks. So yeah, we talk about fuels marketing, but fuels to us is anything in addition to hydrocarbon fuels, but also low carbon emission fuels. Okay. And how do you go to market? Is it typically through partnerships or a direct sales force? How does your sales kind of channel set up? We do both. We do have direct sales team around the globe. So we've got folks on, I guess, about seven continents supporting our sales efforts. However, it's really based on a channel strategy. And we've been fortunate to be selected by many of the major payment technology providers like FIS and the World Pay Group. PayPal, working with Fiserv and Apple and Amazon and Google, where we enable their payment capabilities across these industries, across convenience, retail, and fuels marketing. And then also we have strategic partnerships like Accenture or Fleet Corps, one of the largest fleet providers across the globe. And then we're also working with automobile manufacturers to enable payments and loyalty programs supporting their connected car initiatives. So we have white, as we call them, uh, partners that white label our platform. So, you know, companies like NCR, a large point of sale provider, their sales team actually resells our platform into their brand, as does FIS WorldPay and many of these other partners that I mentioned. Okay. And I think there's been, and you obviously can speak to it well, a lot of transformation in this space, right? I mean, in fact, I was talking to my dad about this a few days ago, how, you know, you used to pull up and have to go inside to pay just to get gas. And that has completely changed, but it's even gone, you know, I think beyond that, right? Where you pull up to a pump and if you want something from inside, you may have the option to have it delivered to your car. Exactly. Yeah, if we think about mega trends that are going on, which I think you're describing now, first of all, digitization of daily lives and consumer mobile payment adoptions is on the rise across all categories, right? The branded merchant apps, super apps, or even online browsing apps, I mean, you know, where you can order from a fuel dispenser, order from your mobile app, pull forward, and they'll deliver your products, you know, from the sea store right to your car, including age-regulated products like cigarettes and tobacco and alcoholic beverages that we do real-time online verification of the age with a third-party verifier so they can securely deliver those age-regulated products out directly to your car. Wow. Times certainly have changed in that space, haven't it? It has. So what would you say differentiates your company from the competitors out there? So I think we focus on mobile payments in maybe a little bit different way than our competitors. Number one, we believe it has to be simpler than the way we do it today. It has to be faster than previous solutions, and it has to be more secure. So, you know, as I talk about each of those, simple means that there's no need to swipe a credit card or enter a zip code or remember your loyalty ID. Mobile apps do all that. So you'd say, well, well, who's our competition? Our competition is really kind of three categories. It's big brands that are trying to decide, are they going to build mobile commerce solutions themselves or are they going to partner? The second type of competitor is the payment networks that are not really necessarily the networks, but the acquirers that are trying to figure out as plastic goes away because we're making it so simple, how will they respond? 
And then thirdly, it's the point of sale providers that are, you know, as we go touchless commerce, well, we may not need hardware going forward. So that's really the competition. And by making it simpler for the consumer, making it faster, as an example, within six seconds, we can authorize the payment, we can apply a discount, and the consumer's ready to check out. And we make it more secure. So if you think about initiating the payment from the comfort of your car, like the example at the C-Store, where we have the products delivered right out, you have no risk of card skimmers or no stolen identities. So that's really how we differentiate ourselves by solving for all the complexity and the costs and a constantly evolving marketplace and providing tools to our partners to move faster with new consumer innovation. Sure. So we talked a little bit about the trends, but where else do you see mobile payments heading, say, in the next two to three years? Yeah. So I think if we look near-term, digitization is in every part of our lives. I mean, McKinsey just recently published a report, McKinsey and Company, that said digitization is accelerated by three years since COVID closures. I think the second area, second mega trend that we focus on, you know, near term is the power dynamics of the payments industry. And, you know, this is that shift in favor of mobile payments and also subscription, right? We all have subscriptions to start it out with cable channels. Now, Netflix, well, we see payments and convenience retailing also moving to subscription, like unlimited coffee program at your favorite convenience store or EV charging subscriptions, or car wash subscriptions. And then thirdly, was the need for traditional payment technology providers to diversify or collaborate, or even acquire in certain cases to remain relevant in the market. So, you know, we've seen massive consolidation in the last 24 months, and many of those companies like FIS and the acquisition of WorldPay or Fiserv acquiring First Data or global payments merging with TSIS, you know, now have reached two companies like P97 to help fill in the technology gaps as consumers go mobile. And then probably just two other points that kind of highlight over the next few years is millennials. Millennials are a force to be dealt with. They're the first digitally native generation, and they've overtaken baby boomers as the largest adult population in America. Most of them have settled down, got careers, homes, families. Their buying power will increase from $1.4 trillion this year to about $4 trillion by 2030. So definitely a market segment and a digitally native segment that we need to pay attention to. The other area that's really kind of popped up in the last few years is what I call micro fleet drivers. So this is Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, just to name a few. But this is a really important segment, especially around convenience retail and fuels marketing, because generally this segment is underbanked or underemployed, you know, hence why they're driving micro fleets in the first place. But their largest spin categories are generally fuel, convenience, and grocery. So again, fits well with this overall theme of convenience retailing. And since COVID closures, we all have more stuff delivered to our houses, whether it's food or it's Amazon. So home delivery is is very important. You mentioned, you know, the trends with millennials out over the next 10 years. Are there other trends that you see in that sort of 10-year time frame? Yeah, so I think that now this is my my projection looking out just based on some of the things we're doing. I think Bitcoin will become a managed currency. With several things have to happen first. The industry needs to solve for either proof of work, including the environmental impacts, or migrate to proof of stake for the validation of mining of coins. So that's got to be solved for. We need to address pricing of coins and caps and custody wallets in order to address concerns around volatility. And we need to get alignment on blockchain networks, including the exchange of coins and custody wallets. But I think Bitcoin is going to become a managed currency. Secondly, you know, we've talked about a little bit, EV charging and roaming networks have to become ubiquitous. 
But as previously mentioned, we're investing heavily in business development to help our clients with energy transition, including category formation. You know, this is things like EV subscription services, where large utilities and large energy companies are developing mobile commerce relationships for the very first time. So big area of investment for us. But we already know that 75% of EV charging is going to happen on home circuits, 25% on roaming networks, which currently EV cells are constrained where consumers don't have the confidence that anywhere they go, they can get roaming services for EV charging. So that's got to be sorted out. But EV charging and roaming networks, I believe, will become ubiquitous, similar to what cellular networks, cellular phone networks did in 15, 20 years ago. The third thing I just want to highlight is the millennials and their importance of buying power, the micro fleets. And then lastly is transport as a service will become a much larger and important ecosystem as unanimous driving or autonomous driving vehicles start to reach the marketplace. So those are kind of the the longer term trends that we're looking at. I wanted to back up for a second and, and ask another question about the company. So is the business model, is it a platform as a service? Is it a subscription based or are you in the actual transaction? Yeah, great question. So the case is start at the highest level, we're a cloud-based software as a service solution. We run globally on Microsoft Azure platform. So it's easy for us to scale up to over 140 countries as we expand, just having that infrastructure already in place. But our value proposition is, is several things. We provide payment and tokenization, so digitization of the wallets. We provide omni-channel messaging and digital marketing capabilities to help drive consumer adoption for the merchant branded apps or even the super apps in the market. We also provide the ability for connected car platforms to connect to our network to have a single gateway to access today over you know 50,000 retail locations We expect to be at about 75,000 by the end of this year based on current projects that we're working on. So I guess think of it as as a cloud service and a single gateway that provides access to super apps, to merchant branded apps, to connected cars, to be able to conduct commerce, whether it's fueling, recharging, on-street and off-street parking, quick service restaurants, you know, for pull up and curbside delivery, or just traditional convenience retailing. Okay. And can you talk a little bit about the connected car, kind of what that environment is like and sort of where you guys play in that space? Sure. So in connected car, we either have direct relationships with the auto OEMs, the original equipment manufacturers, or we work through tier one suppliers. So we have partnerships with companies like Sirius XM Radio to enable mobile payments from the dash of the car. As most people know, Sirius XM puts in a black box in the vehicle, which provides a very secure channel for us to communicate with that consumer and enable mobile payments. But we do the same with other strategic providers. We work with a company called Zevo which provides connectivity into General Motors, Chrysler, Fiat, and Hyundai automobiles. So they connect to our platform, which gives all those connected cars direct access to transact at any merchant on our platform. And I think one more clarification, could you talk about, you mentioned sort of the marketing and loyalty aspect. So can you talk through how you guys work with uh, the retailers for those aspects? Sure. And that's really a, you know, we don't really call ourselves a mobile payment company. While that's core and near and dear to our hearts, we're really a mobile commerce platform. So what that really means is anybody can dip a credit card and make a payment. That works fine. However, what brands really want to do is develop a relationship with the consumer so they can also influence them during that purchase journey. So that's by providing promotions and offers, leveraging our platform for deal of the day, deal of the month, or new products that they want consumers to try. 
so that by using our digital marketing capabilities, they can provide offers or accelerated rewards to influence consumers to try new products or drive the frequency in which they come back to that particular brand. So that's the digital marketing side. And then our omni-channel component allows us to message to consumers in app or out of band, as we call it. So if the consumer is active in the mobile app, in the mobile payments app or mobile commerce app, then we can message them inside the app with a couple of things. Interstitials, which is messages that pop up during the transaction to educate or provide additional incentives or offers to the consumer or out of band, which is through text messaging or emailing, because we know that consumers aren't just in shopping apps at the time, but we might have the merchant brand might have relevant deals or offers or messaging that they want to get to that consumer so they can build that relationship with the consumer. So yeah, mobile commerce and consumer engagement is just core focus for us. And those messages and those offers, are they able to be pushed out to the in-dash screens and the mobile devices like you were talking about and to the screens on the pumps? Are, Are all those options? Yeah, not only those three options, uh, we're also working with Amazon with for voice-enabled payments. So we'll be able to also communicate with the consumer over voice channels as well, both with companies like Serence, which provide voice biometrics. So we know the consumer can verify the consumer via their voice, and then also with platforms like Amazon Alexa, and as well as all you mentioned, messaging at the fuel dispenser, because we know the consumer that's standing in front of the dispenser based on our geolocation services or pushing offers out at the connected car or through any of these super apps or branded merchant apps. Okay. Are these, in maybe the traditional sense, some of these are loyalty programs? So maybe a fuel company has their own maybe app and you guys are are a part of that or maybe they're white labeling your technology? Yeah, so we really call this loyalty 2.0. So that's the combination of their existing loyalty, you know, points-based loyalty programs, and then combining that with digital offers to the consumer. So this way, the consumer gets the full benefit of the points-based program that they were involved in, and we can even accelerate and stack offers as well. So if the consumer decides to become you know, if they're going to pay with a certain method, then they can get additional points and rewards. But also we allow from our platform to redeem those awards and apply them at that purchase at that particular instance. So we not only have a payment aggregation platform, but we also aggregate loyalty rewards and stack those rewards across multiple partnership programs so the consumer gets the maximum benefit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's a, it's just such a fascinating space with so much built around payments. I just think it's a fascinating story what you guys are doing. Yeah. Well, I think it, you know payments is key because once you're in the middle of the transaction flow, then it allows you to do many, many more things like digital marketing, where we can influence and drive more frequency for consumers to come to a brand. We can drive larger basket size. And we can provide more offers so brands can express themselves and new products that they're bringing to market. Absolutely. So let's switch gears a little bit and talk about you. So tell us about your journey, how you got into the role there of president, CEO, and chairman. Yeah. So I guess, first of all, I'm honored to have the opportunity to lead the team here at P97. I've spent the last 30 years leading mobile tech, SaaS fintech, including two software startups. I'm a tech investor. I'm on private company boards. And then also been very active in leading industry standards development. I'm the founding vice president of the Conexus Mobile Working Group, which is the standards industry or industry standards body within the uh, petroleum industry. And I've had the opportunity to work as part of management across both private and public companies. So I guess from the beginning, I've worked for a large UK 
based utility when we were doing roll-ups in the U.S. back in the uh, early 90s, coming off of a finance background. After about 10 years of doing roll-ups across that industry, started my first software company where we deployed mobile applications around manufacturing. So this was to optimize manufacturing and chemical plants and refineries, then got introduced to payments working on the uh, ExxonMobil SpeedPass project, the original contactless payments that was invented by Mobile Oil back in 1997, where we provided all their online and instant activation for consumers to be able to pay with a RFID key fob. And then, of course, founded uh, P97 in 2012, and we've just been building on this platform ever since. Great. So maybe talk about something you're passionate about. So maybe there's one work-related passion and one non-work-related passion. Yeah, good. Well, I guess I'll start with the work-related. It's really developing teams of like-minded professionals that are inspired to change the world. I think we did that in our first company and we're doing that again in this company. We're trying to create a better place for all of us to live. So I think that's truly a passion of how we can either create new technology or change the way that technology has been previous deployed to make it a better place to take friction out of the way that we live. Now, over on the personal side, you know, passionate about family, I like participating in sports like golf and skiing and things and able to do with our children as they grew up and have become young professionals. And obviously, you've been in and around payments for a while. And I like to ask this question because there's always a unique or different perspective that the leaders in this industry provide. But I talk about I started in payments in 2005 and, you know, certainly wasn't getting into it as a career option and sort of just fell into it and haven't gotten out. But I think it's different these days, right? Kids graduating from college, they've potentially even taken fintech type courses in college. And they look at the industry and say, hey, that might be a career path that I I want to follow just because of all the investment and, and technology and how sexy the industry is. So maybe what would your advice be to a senior graduating from college and they're looking at payments or fintech as a career path? What advice would you give them to help them be successful? Yeah, you know, I'd say that to go into payments, you, you have to recognize it's an industry you're going to constantly be learning in. I mean, payment solutions, whether it's mobile or just payments in general, are generally complex. They're constantly evolving. So it's very much an industry that's going to always be exciting. But if a candidate's not really interested in trying to learn something new every day, they'll quickly get left behind. Also, I would say in payments, is it's about networking. As a business, you got to develop partnerships. you got to maintain integrations and certifications with your partners. And you got to align with consumer expectations. So it's an industry that you got to network and build partnerships to be successful. And so that should be part of your DNA. And also, I think it's you have to vertically focus as a key to success in payments. You gotta go out and really focus, conquer a vertical market, and then leverage those mainstream wins to expand your business beyond your initial core markets. So uh, I think Jeffrey Moore framed it up in technology as it evolves, crossing the chasm and all the requirements to be successful. We very much, I very much believe and practice you know, some of those early learnings in technology innovation. Well, Don, we've covered a lot of ground today about the company and the market and where it's heading and, and about you and your journey. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up? And no, I just would, you know, like to say thanks for the time today. Thanks for the questions. And, you know, it's just it's an exciting space to be in. It, it's changing every day. So we just got to encourage the young professionals to come join this industry and help us to just continue to evolve it and make it a greater place for everybody. Absolutely. I agree 100% with that. Well, Don, thanks so much for being on the show. I know your time is very valuable, so I really appreciate you being here. Greg, my pleasure. Anytime. Thanks. Thank you. And to all you listeners out there, I thank you for your time as well. And until the next story. Thank you for joining us this week on the Leaders in Payments podcast. Make sure you visit our website at leadersinpayments.com, where you can subscribe to the show and where you'll find our show notes. 
If you enjoyed listening, please share on your social channels as well.